Greetings, Vault citizens. Johnny5 Alive here, your Vault Overseer, and welcome back to another episode of Vault Tech Settlements. Let's build. And in today's video, we're going to be building the weapon shop in our Project Sanctuary Reborn. So stay tuned and let's check it out. All right, guys, so starting things off, we are at four times speed. We're going to be testing this out. Now, the weird thing about making these videos is I'm so far ahead of you guys because I mean, at the time of this recording, only episode one is out. So the only feedback that I really have to go off of is episode one. And I've already made two and three, as well as the spotlights. And uh, I haven't seen the feedback on those ones yet. But I decided to kind of take the initiative to try four times speed for you guys here. Um, since since I'm able to. Um, now, the, the only issue that I have with the four times speed is that... This is two hours of recording for a half an hour of footage. That means if I have to stop every two hours to, you know, talk over a video for half an hour and then render that, it, it, it does make the process pretty slow. I have an hour's worth of work for every two hours worth of work. So it does, it does definitely make things difficult. Having six times speed allows me to do it at least every three hours so we do get a 50 percent more um efficiency so it, you know i'm still looking for that feedback we're trying things out we're still early in the series and four times speed seems a little bit better in terms of like walking around it's not as jarring but then when i'm going through the menus and and fiddling with things it's going to be a little bit more boring at times but i have plenty to talk about and things to say and, and to do and to fill that time up so I'm not too worried I always c can find something to talk about to fill the time so we'll make the most of it and we'll try and make it as entertaining and full of information as possible so let's talk about what I'm doing here and why <laughs> we're now at the red house which is kind of across the street or down the street from our Minutemen headquarter as well as our rights in we've skipped two small houses and we're at the very end of the street so you can see there in the background there's a blue house, and next to that is a yellow house, and next to that would be our rights in. The blue house adjacent to us right now, just on the other side of that, is our Minutemen headquarters. So there there are three houses, I guess, in total, in between our last two builds and this. Those will be something that we probably just decorate with simplicity. We want to keep things in mind like our FPS. Now luckily with the way Sanctuary is laid out, it's not too concerning like I was looking at like I would zoom out at the end of the street and look at the inn and the Minutemen headquarters all together and I did see like a f drop to about 40 FPS but that was absorbing everything I had built in one direction and this game doesn't have a lot of object culling so if let's just say if you have a bunch of knickknacks like OCD decorator inside of a house in most games or, I mean it, it, it's part of the mod author's fault as well um, they could do LODs where the last LOD like an LOD is a level of detail and the further your camera gets away the lower the quality of the detail goes out and you can drop an LOD the furthest LOD usually like LOD 3 or 4 is going to be vanished it's completely gone um, so some of these mods like OCD decorator and do-it-yourself they really should have added in LODs or kept LODs in their group objects. That way, if you're far enough away, they just disappear. They're completely gone. And and they shouldn't even really be that far. That way, we if we looked at something, <clears throat> everything's inside of a house. It should technically not be rendering those things. And uh, yeah, I, I, they, they should completely disappear. Then you got culling. So what at culling is, is when you have a wall and you put something behind it. This is what we use a lot. We used to use a lot in Unreal when I worked in the game industry. Is uh, culling. And if you have an object behind a wall, it just doesn't render it, depending on how big the wall is. So, all these houses and all these walls inside these houses should call everything on the inside. If it was optimized and it was efficient, we wouldn't really have to worry about frames because all this stuff that we're building on the inside here is uh. It, 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 it's, it's, it would be super efficient, but now it's not, so we have to deal with it. 
So anyways, <clears throat> I want to keep that stuff in mind, but the layout of Sanctuary allows us to not to worry about it too much, because when we're looking at the weapon and armor shop, everything that we built is behind us. So there is one thing that this game does right. <laughs> it doesn't render anything that you see, and most games do that, so um, that, it's not too big of a deal. So, um... Yeah, it, it, that's, it's kind of like a nice thing that we got in this efficient layout. However, when we're at the crafting station, we will be absorbing some of that stuff. Um, and I think as long as we get about 30 to 40 FPS in every direction, and we don't just zoom out and look at everything in Sanctuary all at once, that'll tank our computers. But we want to be able to navigate and use Sanctuary and have it tolerable. And luckily, the layout allows us to do that. So anyways, all that ranting is for a reason, because now we're building this um, weapon shop, and it's far away from our other builds. It's not next door to our other builds, and that is important. So keep these things in mind when you're doing mega builds, and keep in your mind your layout, your part count, and all that. I think each one of these builds could have been fun. Like, they could have been nice little settlements in and of themselves. However, it doesn't make sense to have these sanctuary homes in other areas of the wasteland and project sanctuary is something very special and unique near and dear to my heart and i've always wanted to do this so i want to push it as far as i can and hopefully we get it all built without um blowing up my computer so you, you, we've been building a lot of stuff in the background we're about seven minutes in and you, there's there's a lot of red going on and there's a lot of funky objects i put a water tank on the roof i put a windmill like what am i doing why um now i have this debate in my head like what's what's immersion breaking versus cool i talked about some of this stuff in previous episodes you always want to think about your composition directional forces and the silhouette of your build silhouettes are very important and you want to take advantage of that now, I said that this build here, we want to sell the the fantasy that this is a big weapon shop. And in order to do that, we want big bulky objects and we want to load it up with unique characteristics that says this is a weapon shop. So here in the back, you know, I didn't really know what I was doing going into this, but, um, you know, I didn't want to just build like... I didn't want to just decorate the interior of the house. I want to build characteristics. So you see me putting down these big generators, big water tanks, windmills. I want this to look and feel like Borderlands. Something crazy that you would see. Now, does it break the immersion? Like, how the heck did these Wastelanders get this generator down here? Now, I guess we're going to have to... We're just going to have to pretend that, you know, Surges knows how to repair cars. I don't really know how it would work, but <laughs> I'm sure they could get their hands on gasoline somehow, or an electric car, I don't know, a fusion cell powered car, or truck, and, and tow things, and drag things, or <laughs> maybe they wheeled it over um, the old fashioned way, put some, <laughs> craned it onto something, I mean there are mechanical things in the wasteland that are functioning and powered so maybe they hoisted it onto something and wheeled it back who knows but um that's the one thing that i was like is it too immersion breaking that was my only concern and for the purpose of this build we're just gonna have to say f it <laughs> you can think what you want you can you know pretend you can use your imagination but we want to make a really cool build that has lots of personality and sells the fantasy of like a Borderlands junky crazy weapon shop. So I talked about color pops and how Bethesda uses this a lot in this game. And that's why you see a lot of objects in this game that have big painted colors. A red water tank, a yellow power generator, yellow windmill. <clears throat> All these different things are assets from the game placed in certain areas with touches of paint to create color pops that really catch your eye and they're surrounded by you know metal junk and and uh, more neutral colors like wood and gray and uh or brown and gray <laughs> and yeah so for for me i wanna I was, I was thinking like okay the red is great but we don't want too much red we want little pops of yellow as well 
Um, we we want to sell that kind of um, yellow cad or cat construction feel, as well as um, red for aggression and violence. That's your weapon shop. It's uh, aggro. It's your offense. So red is a really great uh, representation of that. Yellow is a little bit more construction or fun and playful, and we can we can really get some nice color pops using these red and yellow assets. But how do we use it? How do we integrate it? What are we doing with it? So I wanted to, I didn't want to just decorate the inside of the house. So I need an extension so that we like go into the garage and that's the store. And here I got the idea of like, well, there's a little bit of space down there. What if the back end ends up being a warehouse? And because I was playing around with the doors and sometimes you're looking through these pieces and then you get a, a discovery. You realize, oh, what a, you know, you just want to tinker with things and try things out. So, you never know what you're going to get. You're just playing. And when I went into this, I was thinking, I, I never even had the idea of a warehouse. But you discover something and through your discoveries, you get new ideas. And you don't know if those ideas are going to work until you try them. And uh, so after my two hours of building or so, by the end of this video, I'm still unsure. So I figured, you know, we'll just, I'll just make the video, show you guys the shots, and, and see what you think. Now the problem, again, with doing these videos ahead of you guys, is by the time you guys start leaving your comments on what you think of this build, I probably would have already moved on to starting to add on to it. So if everybody's like, oh, that was a terrible idea, <laughs> <laughs> it might it might be a little too late, <laughs> but um, I, you know, I'll be, before I continue onward, I'm going to go into game and sit there for five ten minutes and assess what I've done, think about it, and you know, the only problem that I'm having with this is this big back door that I'm building here, this opened area. It um, it's not really accessible. So even if they in let's say say in the fantasy that they had a vehicle to take all this stuff back to build like they brought these big metal doors back and they brought all this stuff back they hauled it and hoisted it here well how do they actually get back here it's behind the houses i mean there are spaces in between the houses that you can drive between um, but i end up filling that one between the green and red house but there's another space behind the green house that you can get behind so i was thinking maybe i could even take some of those driveways and build a concrete road or just like maybe even use some of those graves and draw like a dirt path or something and and that way it's like and have a big truck back here that way it's like you could it's selling the idea that they had a truck they built all this stuff they hoisted all these things back here they have a pathway to drive back here and try to make sense of it um, we're, we're gonna try our best to tell a story and also try to make it somewhat believable but we're definitely defying <laughs> the immersion here a little bit. But the trade-off is the fantasy comes to life. So for me, I think fantasy is more fun and more important than immersion. So long as the immersion is... We're not, we're not going so far to make all this stuff brand new or pre-war. So we're not breaking the lore, I guess, if that makes sense. We're just making it seem like questionable how they put this together. But if you use your imagination, you say it's plausible. So that's where I'm okay with the immersion breaking. Um, I want I want things to be plausible, but at least be believable in the sense that everything is still a shambled deconstructed pre-war create or post-war creation and uh yeah and, and that, that that should be enough for me but the fantasy is important here and we want this thing to be a big bulky weapon shop and i'm still unsure what i'm doing with everything but <clears throat> as you guys can see there i found a case of mini nukes i've found containers i've found all these big bulky weapon heads i even have a rocket out front So, um, <laughs> we'll be able to fill this warehouse with some mega duty ammunition, some uh, <laughs> bombs and missiles, all sorts of things, weapons, you name it. This 
warehouse is going to get filled up with guns. And that definitely sells the fantasy of a weapon shop. And I think it's kind of cool to have a gigantic warehouse storing everything. And then you have the shop front selling all the ammo, like the minor stuff, the small things. So it's like if you're a raider or you're a wastelander and you're like, I need a missile. <laughs> I need <laughs> I need a mini nuke. <laughs> I, I need a fat man launcher. I need any of this stuff. Well, step step into the warehouse with me for a second and let me see what we have and it'll just be loaded with stuff now i'm still unsure about the layout on the inside here will probably be good to have some kind of like walkways and rails up top like almost like a half second level that can at least access some of these upper crates i really don't have any idea but i did think one level was too shallow and we had two 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 story high is going to be the way to go um, so, we're, we're, I'm trying to fill all this in and make it functional right now, and I'm, I was struggling to find that door frame, and then I found a wooden door frame that fits that little area. Sometimes <laughs> it gets a little bit puzzling trying to find the pieces you need to fit, but again, going back to previous episodes and what I've been saying is, you get a little bit faster at finding these things. However, with this episode, I'm embarking into new menus and new ideas that I haven't yet tried. So I'm discovering windmills and <laughs> water towers, and I'm like, I gotta use this. <laughs> I gotta use it for the silhouette, for the color pop, and d doing this warehouse, it really benefited me because now I could put this big industrial power generator on top of it, and it actually builds that silhouette up. Now the water tank doesn't really make sense. Well, they, they, maybe they need water to um, they're blacksmithing weapons, like they're putting stuff together. Maybe they need some water to cool off the heated metal. I don't know. <laughs> Does it really matter? They have a water <laughs> tower. They have a windmill for power generation. This is a heavy duty weaponry uh, shop. And uh, originally when I wanted to build that roof, I was thinking about guard towers. So that that's why I wanted stairs leading up and the front there where you see those red canopies on top I want to uh, put some guard towers so this place is gonna be heavily guarded probably gonna have like two guards out front one on top um, maybe even one inside the shop we'll have the arms dealer so there'll be like four people working the shop technically we have two bedrooms on the inside of the house so I can uh, do two full bedrooms four beds with shifts and have you know different various guards taking turns in their shifts and it should be uh, kind of believable and yeah, heavily guarded and I think that's pretty cool it adds to that immersion the fantasy the storytelling and I, with all my spotlights and all the characters that I do in in the the, the second pass which is making the light place come to life I dress them up so we're gonna definitely have guards um, that have some pretty sweet armor. I have some things in mind. So here we I just cut to something and you're like, what happened here? This is a shooting range that I found. It's uh there's a bunch of games that come with the Nuka Cola pack. And I talked about this in one of the previous episodes is I found a mod that unlocks all the Nuka World DLC assets that you can build in, in settlements. And I haven't played Nuka World on this profile yet, so I decided to plot this thing down and give it a go. And I was really just experimenting with it off camera. And that's why I found a place for it. And then I decided to cut to the video and show you guys here. And I'll actually show it in real time after once we get it in place and working. It'll be like how I end the ep episode off. There'll be sound effects and stuff. You guys will see how it really works. But there's a bunch of games. There's like Ski Ball and all sorts of things. So that is something that you can keep in mind for any of your builds. You can actually make like a, an arcade or a gaming place. So I'm trying to wedge it in between the houses. And originally, I see I run all the way back there. I wanted the 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 bandit roundup to be level with the houses or flush with the houses sunk in and I had the idea of I wanted to use that garage door for some something somewhere for some reason and uh, so I had the idea of like you open this garage door and there's this alleyway with this game and I thought that might be kind of like fun and immersive and eventually 
you know, I'm having a hard time, like, fitting it in, because it's crashing into the house on the left, crashing into the house on the right. Um, you do see the gate fully covering the house. It's because I put, I found uh, rusted mm, uh, chain link fences, and I patched up the left side. So it wasn't just like, yeah, this is, so you could still see chain link fence and somewhat have it believable. Um, but then, I don't know, it's like struggling with the position, and here I am um, trying to fit the garage door in, and we need something to hold the garage door in and enclose it. And <laughs> I keep forgetting about the freaking scale tool. As I went back to do the recordings and the talk over for the other Let's Builds, I ended up hearing myself talk about the scale tool, and then it, I, like, a light bulb went off that why wasn't I thinking about the scale tool going to this? And you just forget, Planet Coaster doesn't have a scale tool. Um, I'm not used to using the scale tool in this. I've used it a few times, so you often forget about it. And here, I'm like... <laughs> I could have just scaled that garage door up to make it fit, but I still want some kind of pillars. But I didn't need to have, like, two wide pillars, or I could have scaled those pillars up. There's a bunch of things that I could have done. Maybe I could have even scaled the Bandit Roundup down. But I think the Bandit Roundup, you don't want to scale and move around. I was using the nudge keys and um, the little duckies that would go across. They were like nowhere to be found. I think when I scaled it like or nudged it, it moves the asset itself, but all the inner animations stay in the original location. So if we scaled it, I would imagine that the little duckies and animatronics don't scale. So I think anything that's like animated, or not anything, but some of the animated things, or at least the Bandit Roundup might be a little bit buggy when you're dealing with the nudge and scale tools with uh, Place Anywhere. So I, I did, um, you know, I did have to hand place it and move it manually and get it in. Luckily with Place Anywhere, you could do no turn off snapping and turn off ground snapping so I was able to kind of land it where I needed it and then kind of nudge everything around it into place so this really is the last thing I end up building and I spent a little bit too much time on it for this build however I think there's enough content there around the house where we built the bulk of everything and it was a kind of like a slightly different approach with this build than the last ones because we are trying to go for that silhouette the the fantasy and the composition and I need to nail that first before I move on because that dictates our dictates our shape and from there our, whatever shape we have whatever shell we have we can decorate from there so there's no point in putting up like fences or anything in our, inside of our garage yet or building those shells because that layout may change depending on what we do with our silhouette as you guys saw there's a warehouse in the back now so I had to put a door in and then like you know so I, I really want to build up the bulk of this project before decorating whereas like the inn I first thing I did was I think snapped all the closets in the doors in I, I put the stairs in I put the kitchen or whatever I just went in and started decorating the inside of the house and I think I did most of the outside last same with the Minutemen headquarters I, I did a little bit of both, it was back and forth, but I, I did with the Minutemen headquarters, I, I, I wanted to get that guard tower in present, and I did work on that silhouette. Whatever silhouettes I want, or bulk that I'm looking for, big additions, I definitely work on that first, because that, that you know, has a cascading effect on all your decorations. So we had a little bit of that with the Minutemen. Here, it's like everything. It's the most important thing. And um, I. so at the end of the episode, we do have something shapely. We have something decent for a thumbnail, as you guys would have saw clicking the thumbnail into this video. And I made sure after a few hours of recording, I took my uh, screenshot. I got some footage. And you guys will see that footage in a sec. So we can at least get an update or a progress. And you guys can see in real time what it ends up looking like and I'm kind of happy with the silhouette I might make some subtle adjustments here and there but I, I like the water tanks and the generators and the color pops on there we're gonna need some wood or yeah we got lots of concrete right now we're gonna need some wood integrated some neutral colors 
and I think um, we're gonna do like a a guard tower. I think barbed wire, lots of barbed wire everywhere, chain link fences, especially for the garage. I'm liking the way these chain link fences work. They have that <coughs> rusted red brown color to them. Um, it's a neutral version of our red. And uh, I think that's going to be really good for the garage area. You go in, you open a chain link fence. There's chain link fences all around you. We'll put some of that red cloth over top of it. So you got chain link and red cloth. And then we'll put shelving down and fill those shelves with weapons. And then you go into the house and there will be more uh, shelving, more weapons. And there's this nice little room that was, I think it meant to be like a kitchen or something. But it's it's super skinny. I don't know really what it was intended for. But... It's a super skinny long room, and I'm like, okay, if we put a counter in front of the door well, then behind that is kind of his, like, his money room or safe room or uh, ammunition. It's a locker room, and we can fill that with stuff, which is different than our warehouse because the warehouse serves the purpose of big bulky items, and the safe room will serve a purpose of, like, high-valued guns, cash, um things to restock the shelves with it's it's just also kind of yeah it, it'll be pretty cool i think i have a bunch of ideas for it so the crutch door is now working and i was so fascinated by this because originally what i was having a problem with when it when it was pushed so far back was you couldn't read bandit roundup but i liked the surprise i liked going oh you open this door up and then you see bandit roundup you're like i wanted it to be a mysterious door so here's a look at the real time cinematic shots of our silhouette we got this big giant weird junky gate on the left i quite like that leading to the vault it really ties into the composition so it's a part of it i just plopped it down and there we go and we're really getting an idea of the personality the characteristics and the fantasy of this build with big bulky items we built a little bit of a warehouse and we got the shell started. Now there's a bunch of clutter laying around outside. All those red canopies you see are probably going to get moved. Uh, some of them are going to get deleted. I'm going to find places for them. But uh, they're just there temporarily, essentially. And uh, yeah, here's all the different signs that I put down before I recorded as part of my prepping for the episode. All that stuff could be used here. It's like graffiti signs, weapon signs. So we're gonna add that stuff, and it's gonna it's gonna add to the silhouette, the color pops, and all sorts of things. So here we go. We're real time again, and I'm playing the Bandit Roundup, and uh, <laughs> just having a little bit of fun with it. It's now working. As I was saying earlier, though, the Bandit Roundup was being hidden by the garage, and I like the element of surprise. But now. Hopefully you can't hear the sound coming through my headphones. <laughs> Anyways, now the bandit roundup is loud and proud up above. And basically, you can read it from a distance, and then you go open the garage. I kind of like that. You can close it down for the day and open it up for the day. So I'm using an Xbox controller to shoot these, so I'm doing my best here, guys. It's uh, I have terrible aim with the Xbox controller. It gets a little bit tricky. Um... There it is, though, guys. There's my... The, the starting to the weapon shop. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. What did you guys think of the speed adjustment? The length of the episode? I think there's some drastic changes in between the uh, episodes. I mean, the second one for Rights In was like an hour long at six times speed. So I'm definitely going to try and chunk it out a little bit. But I think we're able to do that a little bit better here because we're building big, big silhouettes. So we have a lot more to show for our efforts here. So I quite, I quite like what, uh, using these pieces and these kits. Whereas if we would have done like two or three episodes for the other ones, we wouldn't have had a lot to show off and would have been kind of like, uh, anticlimactic. But here we go. There it is, everybody. That's going to do it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please be sure to smash that like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe for more daily videos. And if you'd like to support the show, you could do so by becoming a patron. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope you all have a fantastic day. And we'll see you in the next Let's Build. Bye now.